rightly, that the media is one of the arms that is oppressing them. I was wondering if you could uh, talk a little bit about the... <laughs> it doesn't sound like it's, uh, it's important, but it, it felt to me very consequential, the Andrea Mitchell talking about... Uh, Ted Cruz. Oh yeah. Can she, she someone break this down? Yeah. So so Ted Cruz quoted Shakespeare on the, uh, during the impeachment hearing. Yeah. Just the quote was, um, "It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing." That was he quoted that to describe how he viewed impeachment. Right. So, so, so Andrea Mitchell the then goes on Twitter and blasts him um, for not not knowing for uh, mistakenly thinking that it was Shakespeare and not realizing that it was. Uh, William Faulkner, who of course wrote a novel, The Sound and the Fury, that was, you know, based on that quote from Shakespeare. And then, uh, that was silly, and that was a mistake, and it happens, but the, the, the funnier thing was that she, she was suddenly sort of subtweeted by all of the hashtag resistance all-stars from, you know, Jennifer Rubin on, uh, saying, basically cheerleading this comment, and I, I just thought it was representative of, you know, a lot of people look at these sort of uh, elite journalistic uh, celebrities, not just as, as uh, people who ignore them or um, are snobs, but also people who just aren't that smart and are often often wrong. And when they when episodes like that just seem to underscore that that whole uh, dynamic. I don't know. I was wondering what you thought about that. Yeah, you know, obviously, on the one hand, Andrea Mitchell mistaking um, a quote misattributing a quote that was written by Shakespeare to Faulkner is a completely trivial matter. Completely. But she thought it was important enough to show everybody that Ted Cruz was an idiot, that he can't even like properly quote Shakespeare. And the reason why she did that is because embedded in the sense of liberal superiority is this idea that conservatives are imbeciles. They're uneducated, they're primitive, um, they're not sophisticates. And she knew exactly what she was doing. She's a smart woman. She's been around for decades. She's on MSNBC, a, a network watched almost exclusively by liberals. So she was trying to say, like, hey, look at me and us. Aren't we the smart ones? We're illiterate, and these are illiterate idiots. They can't even quote Shakespeare. So it isn't that her mistake was important. What was important was the reason she thought it was worthwhile to use her platform to do it. Check this. Now, there may be some people in the crowd who disagree with me. So, first of all, let me put something else out on the table and make it very clear. That, of course, none of what I say is to, in any way, undermine the basic right that everyone has, everyone always has had, and everyone always will have to take whatever precautionary measures they feel is necessary in order to prevent such a chain of infection from taking place, including isolating yourself in your own home, wearing whatever protective gear you want, socially distancing yourself from anyone you come in contact with, or anything else that you feel is appropriate to prevent such a chain of infection. Of course you have that right. But that negative right is now being flipped on its head into a positive obligation on everyone in society to stop all productive human activity, to lock everyone up in their homes, and to treat them as prisoners, tracking and surveilling everything that they do and everyone that they come in contact with on the basis of a hypothetical chain of infection that could take place. And I want that out on the table. If you agree with that principle and you think that is a good thing, then clearly state it. State it to my face. Oh wait, you can't because you are a prisoner within the walls of your own home and you are not allowed into Japan, but you probably think that's a good thing. But at least say it to my digital face. Clearly state that you agree with the abridgment of our most basic freedoms on the basis of this hypothetical chain of infection. And clearly state your line in the sand is, what do you think would be going too far for the government to do on the back of such a pandemic panic? Biometric ID, tracing and tracking every movement of every citizen at all times for the rest of their lives? Or uh, the ability to march into people's homes to check for potential infections and forcibly vaccinate them if need be? other number of measures that are now coming into view as a result of this panic. What, where is your line in the sand? Clearly
only stay it so that when that line is crossed, people will see that you are a hypocrite for cheering it on. Unless there is no line in the sand, and you think that governments are justified in doing anything that any presumed health authority says in the light of a pandemic situation. But at least state it openly and on the record. Don't hide behind vague, fluffy, woolly language. Tell us what you specifically, not the agents of the state to whom you outsource your violence, but you would do in order to prevent people from living their lives in the event of a pandemic. This, I think, is the question. Where do you draw that line in the sand? If there were an excess mortality event taking place because of a spreading communicable disease, would that justify lockdowns, shutdowns, restrictions? What policies would it justify? In what circumstances? How many deaths? How many deaths would it take before you no longer have a right to leave your own home at the say-so of the health authorities? And who gets to make that decision? These are the fundamental questions. And I understand the desire to have some sort of slam dunk to say, look, see, there's no excess deaths, it's not happening, nothing's happening, so let's go back to regular, as if that argument is going to have an effect. It is not going to have an effect on anyone.